Aí você é essa. Não, Arthur. Se quiser, eu disse para o professor. Quarta coisa. Abby, uh, where, does, where does that loss rank in the long list of South African tournament exits? It's as disappointing as all the other losses in the past. Um, yeah, that's it ranks right up there. It's always very disappointing to me when we lose a game. And the way we lost was, was the most disappointing part of it. We were, we were really in a good position there with the bat in hand early on. And through soft dismissals, we, we lost our way. And that was, that was the, the part of, for me that hurt the most. Um, so we were right in the game on the way for around about 300, which I thought was very defendable on that wicket today. That was quite, quite yeah. Run out. Runouts have obviously become synonymous with these defeats, um, and obviously, in a normal game, these things don't really happen. Um, what do you put that down to? That the fact that there's always there always seems to be a runout in in an exit. Very difficult to to explain that to you. I, I don't know how they happen. Um, it's a partnership out there. It's two guys that trust each, try and touch, trust each other to 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 pull off a run or two, and sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. And and if you you come up short. I, I don't know what happened there today. Um, I wouldn't like to, to blame guys out there. It's just one of those things that happens, I guess. I don't know how, how else to explain it. Skiba, this is Shobit Truboso, Hindustan Times India. You, Virat said that this match will depend on which team keeps its composure. You also said the same thing, mm. and not to get excited. So what happened with so much experience that South Africa had? Where did you lose the game? Was it composure? Lack of, you also mentioned communication. So where did it go all wrong with so many senior players, including yourself and Faf? Yeah, I, I felt the team was pretty composed today. It's, it, I, I don't think we lost it with, with composure. <clears throat> um, a few error in judgment, a um, few mistakes out there cost us badly today. And we desperately needed another partnership in the middle, over, in the, in the middle order. And um, that, that's, that's where we lost our way. We needed one more partnership there of 50 odd. Um, to get the, the ball rolling again after my run out, and we couldn't do that. Uh, run outs happen, but three in one innings is, is definitely um, not the way we want to play our cricket, that's for sure. So it's unfortunate we couldn't get that partnership going again. It's got nothing to do with composure in my eyes. I felt pretty calm out there with the team all the time. Uh, we played some good shots, just a couple of bad error in judgments out there that, that cost us. Uh, given that similar things keep happening when South Africa get knocked out of major tournaments, what kinds of questions are you going to be asking yourself and the team before you prepare for the next one? I'm not thinking about the next one now. Um, we just sort of want to just go get through this hurt now because it's, it's, it's hurting quite bad. I, I haven't thought of what we're going to think about our next tournament. Um, that's probably the World Cup in two years' time. Uh, Look, we've, we've covered all the bases. There's, there's no doubt about that. We've had camp after camp. Um, we've worked really, really hard in the nets, and um, we back each other, we trust each other. And for some reason, things like that just keep happen, happening. Um, it wasn't a knockout game today. It's still part of our pool games. So that's the one area that's a bit different, but it was still a must-win game. And that we, we proud ourselves in, in coming on top when we have to win a game. Uh, we've done that for quite a bit in big series not long ago, in the last 12 to 18 months. And unfortunately, we couldn't pull it off today. Do you still want to play the next one? The World Cup? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, maybe a couple of points. Um, you, you're a very fine athlete, and it's very surprising that you've been run out so many times. Um, is it possible because you do, you're chasing runs which maybe other batsmen would not go for? Me? Yes. Uh, high number of run outs. Um, oh, difficult question. Um, you see, <laughs> I, I just tried to take a one with my partner out there and it didn't work. Um, I wasn't searching for runs. I wasn't even facing. Um, so I, I wouldn't say it like that. Uh, there was a call out there and I, I thought we could, we could get through for the one. And, uh, also, were you looking at a specific score? The way the openers batted, they probably wanted to last a bit and maybe let the others go faster towards the end. Was that the strategy? Our openers. Um, I, I thought they did a fantastic job. Um, we would have loved to have gone for more runs in the first 10, but they bowled extremely well. They didn't miss the mark. There were no cut balls. 
there were no soft boundary options for us in the first 10. So I was pretty happy with around 40, 40 odd in the first 10 overs. So I always felt we could pick it up, which we did um, until my run out. Um, so we were going really nicely then, like I said, heading for around about 300, maybe even more. Um, and I felt pretty good today, so it was, it was disappointing, that, that part of it. Ebi, you just said that the India opening bowlers did well in that first 9-10 overs. It didn't look like the ball was swinging especially a lot or doing anything off the pitch. What did they do right, Bumrah and Bhuvneshwar? Yeah, it wasn't a wicket to pick up a, a pitch to pick up a lot of wickets in the first 10. Um, and they, they assessed that really well and, and early. Um, so what, all they did was to try and hit the top of the off stump um, with a nice tight fielding unit around that, squeezing, squeezing a lot of dot balls out of us and not allowing any soft, dismiss, uh, soft deliveries outside the off stump um, or any easy boundary options for us. So that's what they did well. I think they assessed the conditions well. They knew that could, they couldn't afford to bowl for, for wickets um, with two slips. So they went back to a bit more of a defensive plan and just tried to squeeze us. Um, and it was, if, if a bowling unit's doing that, it's really difficult to get away. Uh, Evie, you know, in series after series, you keep on winning bilaterals and you're the world number one team. What exactly happens in a sudden death situation in tournaments like this? Because this has been happening for quite some time. The tournaments are a little bit different. You, you play different teams all the time on different venues, so it's a, it's a big challenge. Um, no one said it's going to be easy, but we, we, <laughs> we do come up short for some reason in tournaments like this. And it is, it is pretty sad. I, I can't explain to you exactly what happens. Um, I think you saw it out there today. Just a very poor batting performance. Uh, nothing to do with the energy or the intensity or the belief in the team. We, we felt we had a great chance today. We came here to win the game of cricket. And um, we just unraveled as a, as a side out there. Maybe if, if uh, this keeps happening the way that it does and um, there, there's no real explanation for it, I mean, does that suggest that there's a more radical shake-up that's required in South African cricket to, to change the way things go? That question can only be answered by people who are in control of making radical decisions. Um, that's not my, my decision, that. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what people out there want to decide or whoever's in control of, of making those kind of decisions. I, I don't think we're a bad cricket team. Um, but maybe in terms of the mindset, if nothing else. We've tried um, quite a few things. Uh, camps and um, psychologists, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> there, there's been quite a, quite a few game plans around that. And in my mind, that's, that wasn't the problem. It wasn't a mental thing. We just, we just didn't play well. Maybe I'm sure it's not much fun coming here and trying to explain what's happened and, uh, and I'm sure it's much more difficult trying to keep a grip on what's going on when it goes wrong out there. But wh why do you still want to be the captain, if you still want to be the captain? Because I'm a good captain and I can take this team forward. I can take us to win a World Cup, I believe. And I believe the same thing over here in this tournament and the last one. But that's what I believe. I love doing it. Does it feel further away than ever? I mean, 2011, 2015, you seem to be getting closer and closer, and now this, you don't even get out the group stages. The more that you chase this, this dream of World Cups for this generation especially, does it feel like something that is sort of getting out of reach now? I mean, some people might not make 2019 looking at the way things are going. It doesn't. I must be very honest with you. It's not a lot of people believe me, but I, I feel it's pretty close. I don't, I don't feel it feels far away. Um, it's very difficult to say that after a performance like this, but that's what I believe in my heart. I, I believe we're very close as a unit. Um, there's more than enough talent, and we've just got to get it right when it matters most.